So as my style journey has started many, many years ago, I've definitely went through a lot of different seasons. My tastes have changed, what I like has changed, and I've probably spent a whole lot of money on shirts, pants, shoes, jackets, you name it, sunglasses. Watches, not so much. I, was, I didn't really spend too much on watches. I just found what I liked and stuck with it. But I've bought a lot of new things, but I've also let go of a lot of things. A lot of times I either sold my old boots or shoes on eBay, or sometimes I bit the bullet and just let it go. So what we're gonna to discuss today is how to let things go and how to figure out if you should let things go. Because let's face it, unless you're living in a really big house and you have a lot of storage, if you're living in an apartment that's about 700 square feet, which is what I'm in, you probably don't have the space to be able to hold on to 10 pairs of shoes, five different jackets, 15 sport coats, 10, 20, 30 pairs of jeans. So I wanna help you figure out what you can get rid of and what you should be keeping. You like dress shoes? I like dress shoes. This is probably my favorite dress shoe out there. The Allen Edmonds McAllister Wingtip Oxford Dark Chili, absolutely great color. It has just enough of that light brown pop, but it also can blend in if you wear it with some muted colors and it's not always just jumping out at you screaming for attention. Favorite dress shoe, this one has a leather sole. I went ahead and stuck on a sole protector. Now this is what I had at first. I bought the McAllisters in the Daynight sole because I wanted to see if this would be better, more comfortable, just more rugged. And overall, it was okay. But these were never as comfortable as the ones with the leather sole, but I did keep them around in case it was raining or in case it was maybe the fall or winter and I wanted to wear something with a hardier sole. But I just found that I always preferred these and at first I was just taking my galoshes, my overshoes, and eventually I just stuck a sole protector on the bottom. Now I have these, I no longer need these. And especially if you could see in that corner right there, these are my Allen Edmonds strands. So I have two pairs of brown dress shoes that I really enjoy. You have the strands and the walnut, but I can rotate back and forth between these two dress shoes. And cause I'm not wearing dress shoes a lot anymore. These, the rubber soled Allen Edmund McAllister's, these have got to go. It doesn't make any sense for me to keep these. And also I just want to mention that this is the other shoe. Look at the wear pattern. For some reason, the dress shoes with the rubber sole, the day-night sole, when, when it flexes, you see all those folds right there? It just looks really weird. This actually hurt the top of my foot. So if I wore these all day, this is one of the only shoes I've ever had that actually started to hurt on the top of my foot. But the leather soled ones, they always felt great. And now that I can wear these when it's drizzling, when the ground is wet, I don't have to worry about always bringing my overshoes. These are gonna be the ones that I'm keeping. And it doesn't make any sense to keep them as old ones. Get rid of them. So now let's talk boots. Here I have the Allen Edmonds Dalton in the dark chili. I have it here in the walnut color. Again, it's there is a bit of a difference, but the big difference here, same thing. These have a leather sole. I didn't have the sole protector up until very recently. These have a rubber sole. Leather sole, a lot more comfortable. The color, a lot more versatile. No reason for me to keep the walnut ones since not only are they less versatile and they don't really go with khakis, they're less comfortable and these are just better in every way. So the walnut Daltons, these I can get rid of. Now, should you have any duplicates or should you just have one of everything? Well, that depends on you. So far, the dress shoes and the dress boots that I just showed you, I don't think I need any duplicates, especially not the same shoe and just with a different sole. But now we're gonna talk about the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill and the brown Chrome XL leather. This is the one that I've had since 2016, since they launched. So I've had this one for eight years now, resold once. And this is the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. Let's get that out of there. This is the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill waterproof version. Now these are pretty much exactly, exactly the same shoe. Right, there's not a whole lot of difference. When I get up close like that, you could tell this is a bit more of like a dressier, darker brown. This one has a bit more character to it. These are a lot more redundant than the ones that I've just showed you. However, there's no reason for me to get rid of these because the Higgins Mill literally goes with everything in my wardrobe except for shorts. But as long as I'm wearing pants, I can wear the Higgins Mill. And these I've just had for a while. I wanna run these down to the ground and get them resold a third or fourth time or second or third time rather until I can't get them resold anymore because I wanna see how long a pair of Goodyear welted American made boots can actually last. They're pretty much coming up on 10 years. We might make it to 15 years, 20 years with this boot. I am holding on to this boot. Now the waterproof version, I did get this because I wanted something that looked a bit nicer and I actually had some waterproofing in it. That way I wouldn't have to wear my Echo Track 25s with a nice outfit otherwise if it was raining. 
Another good thing about the waterproof version that I found is these have a bit better breathability where these run really hot. I can only wear these in like 40 or 50 degrees or below. These I've worn in 70 degrees and yeah, it's not the most breathable thing, but definitely a lot more breathability than this one. So these, because the Higgins Mill boot is just so versatile and I wear it so much, I am opting to keep these when they're almost exactly the same pair. But what about sneakers? If you got two pairs of Vans old schools like I do, maybe you got a bunch of different pairs of slip-ons. I'm wearing a pair of slip-ons right now. These are very redundant. I do not wear Vans that much. I just pretty much wear them when I'm walking around the apartment or for short walks. If I'm going for longer walks, I'm wearing something that's a lot more comfortable. But I do ride my bicycles in these, so I do get some use out of them, and I do enjoy them when I wear them. Now, here's where it's gonna get maybe not as complicated, but just hear me out, try to follow me. I have three pairs. I have the black old schools, the navy blue old schools, and I have a black pair of slip-ons that I'm wearing right now. I do not need three pairs of Vans. I can get by fine with two. They don't take up a whole bunch of space. There's no reason for me to get rid of them right now, but if I had to, I would just make a split second executive decision and, and just get rid of one of these. I don't need two pairs of old schools. I either get rid of the blue ones or the black ones, depending on my mood. And the nice thing about Vans is they're relatively affordable, under $100. I can get rid of both of them, and if I'm missing them, I can go ahead and just get another pair. And that's actually something that I learned from minimalism a couple of years ago. If you can replace it for not a lot of money, relatively easily, go ahead and get rid of it. Worst case scenario, you're gonna go ahead and just buy another one if you're really missing it. But a lot of times, every time I've gotten rid of something like that, I have not repurchased it. I've found that I didn't need it at all. And it's nice to have less things. I'm telling you, it's just overall, it's a win-win when you have less things, less clutter, less physical clutter in your home, wherever you live in. All right, now let's talk shirts. What I have in here is a whole bunch of my linen shirts. I had two short sleeve navy blue, two short sleeve light blue ones, a short sleeve white one, and then I had two long sleeve navy blue, a long sleeve white and a long sleeve light blue. So I had nine pairs of linen shirts. I went over this in my Collars & Co video, how those nine pairs of linen shirts, they were the best that I had, especially if it was summertime and super hot, but they wrinkled like crazy and I spent so much time actually ironing them. So since I found Collars & Co, here's the bag. I'm getting rid of all my linen shirts. I no longer need them. Now we know about linen shirts. Let's talk about some other shirts. So let me turn your attention over to here. And you can see, this is my external wardrobe. So I've got, a, I've got a couple of flannel shirts right here, nothing crazy. I do have a couple of the light blue Oxford shirts. These are always good to have. I have a couple of blue sport coats. But let's take a look at some of the other shirts. I've got a dress shirt in the micro gingham, right? I've also got a casual shirt and bigger gingham. But I've also got this micro gingham collars and coat shirt. And I've also got this regular, regular navy gingham collars and coat. At this point, this shirt, too redundant, and since it's a gingham shirt, I no longer need it. Why? What if I wanna wear a shirt that has a bigger gingham print? Honestly, I do like this gingham print better than this gingham print. This is just a little bit too big and bold for me. I would much prefer to wear something like this. This is a J. Crew dress shirt. I've worn this casually. Something like this. I, I really like this lighter blue. There's this medium blue micro gingham. And then the more classic, gingham pattern, again, it's not as bold as this. So at this point, we can come to the conclusion that this gingham shirt is no longer needed. That's one less shirt that I have to wash, one less shirt that I have to hang dry, one less shirt that I actually have to pack and continue to take care of and make sure it's all set. So that's an example of how you can go through your wardrobe and see if you have too many duplicates, you can go ahead and get rid of something. And again, the holidays are coming up, Clothing stores like J. Crew, they always have a sale. You can probably find a gingham shirt like this for under 40 bucks. If it's really something that you like, you can go ahead and buy it again. I'm willing to get rid of this shirt, even though I know that in a few months I may want it, but I'd rather wait for that to happen because then I'm gonna know that I really need it or I really want it in my wardrobe. Now, what about all this stuff? The redundancy over here. What about, you might be saying, Tom, what about these? You got three light blue Oxford dress shirts. Should you get rid of all your duplicates? My answer is no, you shouldn't. Staple pieces like a light blue Oxford shirt, a white Oxford shirt. I don't wear the white Oxford shirts too much. Plus I have a couple of dress shirts. I have this white shirt. So between the white Oxford shirt, the white Collars & Co polo shirt, and I have two white dress shirts. I'm good for white shirts. I don't need to have extra white Oxford shirts. But shirts like this, the white. Shirts like the one that I'm wearing, the light blue Collars & Company polo. 
the light blue Oxford shirt, the white Oxford shirt, the navy blue Oxford shirt. There's another one, I have two of these. I could probably use three of these. Shirts and items that you can wear with almost all of your wardrobe, but it's not gonna be as memorable. In my opinion, it is totally okay and even encouraged to have more than one. Because this light blue polo shirt, similar to the light blue Oxford shirt, I used to wear this shirt almost every day. At one point I had four Oxford shirts in light blue, four a bit too much. Now I just have three, three is totally fine. I wear undershirts so I get two or three wears out of them before I actually have to launder them and they get dirty and smelly. But think about that. If you know you can wear that shirt every single day and no one's gonna bat an eye, that's a staple piece and it's usually pretty good to stock up and have two or three of them. That way you just have a little bit more options and you don't have to do laundry as much. Now we talked about jackets too. These are my two winter jackets. I have other lightweight jackets. You've seen my lightweight. You see me wear this jacket a whole bunch, the navy blue with the orange zipper. I do enjoy wearing this jacket. So this is a nice lightweight winter jacket. It's like a late fall winter jacket. Very lightweight, very good. But as far as actual winter jackets, I currently only have two and I only need two. That would be my navy blue pea coat and from Shot NYC. This is a nice heavyweight wool so it's nice and warm. And I also have my navy blue J. Crew parka jacket. And I forgot which, which one this is called, but they always have one parka jacket that's really heavy and really good. This is the one that has a removable fur collar. So these two jackets I can pretty much wear interchangeably. The navy pea coat is good if I'm really dressing up and wearing a suit to a winter wedding. The navy parka jacket is good in all situations, especially if it's raining or snowing. And I don't want to have to deal with wearing a hat because my head and my ears get super cold in the winter. So at one point I had a third option, which was the suit supply top coat in my wardrobe as well. I just found that that thing was not worth its weight. It was lightweight, but it was not warm. It was more just like good for like 50 degree days and then that was it. Not very warm at all and I just, I didn't want to keep it because the navy blue pea coat that I have, so much warmer and I actually like the styling of it better, easier to wear. So that was an example of a high ticket item. I think I paid like $600 for that jacket. I decided to get rid of it. And we could talk about jackets as well. You probably all see my video where I got rid of my light brown leather jacket from Shot NYC and my suit supply top coat. Two jackets that were awesome jackets, but I just didn't have any use for them because like I said, I've got the pea coat if I wanna wear a nice wool jacket and the parka jacket is good for everything else. It's rugged, it's also water resistant, it's warm and it has a hood. Leather jacket was too heavy for me. It didn't really fit right. It was not warm and it was not waterproof. And that top coat from Suit Supply pretty much wasn't much warmer than the actual sport coat from Suit Supply, which you can wear other jackets over it. So you can do this with anything. You can do it with watches, you can do it with shoes, you can do it with bicycles, you can do it with laptop computers, TVs, cars. You don't always need duplicates. And trust me, I know it's happened to me multiple times and it's probably gonna to continue to happen to me, honestly. I just keep having to think I don't need more than one of this or more than one of that. I don't need more than one nice road bike, for example. I don't need more than one casual rain jacket, for example. Yeah, the colors are good, but I know the colors that I like. I know what matches my wardrobe. So I would prefer to keep less things in my wardrobe. That way I don't have as much clutter here in my apartment. This has helped me just be a little bit more peaceful and not as stressed, and I think it can help you too. So these are a couple things you can try just to give it a shot. And now let's talk about jackets for a minute. What if you have a nice tan jacket that you like to wear casually, but then you got a nice navy blue jacket that you pretty much wear only on dressy scenarios? Well, maybe you can actually change up the color of your scarf or the color of your pants so that you can wear that navy blue jacket all the time, and that's one less jacket you have to wear all the time. This is something that I did when I did buy that suit supply top coat in navy blue. I was looking at it in a nice camel color and a nice gray color, but I figured navy blue goes with everything in my wardrobe. And even if I'm wearing a pair of navy pants and I wanna dress it up, I could always throw on a nice tan scarf, or maybe wear a pair of khakis. So just try to be more minimal, try to be more thoughtful about your purchases, try to only keep things that are essential to what you actually need. It's really nice to look at my wardrobe and say, I've got two winter jackets. My main winter jacket is my parka jacket and my nice winter jacket is my pea coat. They can also back each other up. They're both warm. They're both water resistant, even the wool one. Got a whole bunch of nice polo shirts from Collars and Company that allowed me to just not have to deal with ironing anymore. And I got rid of, what was it, 10 linen shirts. 
And these things are also great as well because you can wear sweaters over them. So it's been working out for me and I think it can work out for you too. So I hope this helped. I hope you had fun. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great one. Bye.